I have never heard or seen such outrageous, vicious, distorted reporting in 27 years of public life. I'm not blaming anybody for that. Perhaps what happened is that what we did uh, brought it about, and therefore uh, the media decided that they would have to uh, take that particular line. But when people are pounded night after night uh, with that kind of frantic, hysterical reporting, it naturally shakes their confidence. And yet, don't get the impression that you arouse my anger. <laughs> you see, I have that impression. <laughs> you see, one can only be angry with those he respects. President, Mr. President. Mr. President, your attorneys have taken what is seen as the narrow view on impeachment, saying that impeachment should be limited to very serious crimes committed in one's official capacity. And my question is, uh, would you consider the crimes returned in the indictments last week, those of perjury, obstruction of justice, and conspiracy, to be impeachable of crimes if they did apply to you? Well, I've... Uh... Uh, also uh, quit beating my wife. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, the crime of perjury is a serious crime. And of course, the crime of obstruction of justice is a serious crime and would be an impeachable offense. And uh, I do not expect that the House Committee will find that the President is guilty of uh, any of these crimes to which you have referred. Uh, when you refer to a narrow view of what is an impeachable crime, I would say that what might leave in the minds of some of our viewers and listeners uh, a connotation of uh, which uh, would be inaccurate. It's the constitutional view. Uh, the constitutional is very precise. Even Senator Irvin agrees uh, that that view is the right one. And if Senator Irvin agrees, it must be the right one. <laughs> And I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes, but in all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never profited from public service. I've earned every cent. And in all of my years of public life, I have never obstructed justice. And I think, too, that I can say that in my years of public life, that I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president is a crook well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. President? Yes, sir. Question to Vice President Nixon from Mr. Van Oker. Uh, Mr. Vice President, since the question of executive leadership is a very important campaign issue, I'd like to follow Mr. Novin's question. Now, Republican campaign slogans, you'll see them on signs around the countries we did last week, say, it's experience that counts. That's over a picture of yourself, sir. Uh, implying that you've had more governmental executive decision-making uh, experience than uh, your opponent. Now, in his news conference on August 24th, President Eisenhower was asked to give one example of a major idea of yours that he adopted. His reply was, and I'm quoting, if you give me a week, I might think of one. I don't remember. Now, that was a month ago, sir, and the President hasn't brought it up since. And I'm wondering, sir, if you can clarify which version is correct, the one put out by Republican campaign leaders or the one put out by President Eisenhower. Well, I would suggest, Mr. Van Oker, that uh, if you know the president, that was probably a facetious remark. Uh, I would also suggest that insofar as his statement is concerned, that I think it would be improper for the president of the United States to disclose uh, the instances in which members of his official family had made recommendations, as I have made them through the years, to him which he has accepted or rejected. We leave proud of the people who have stood by us and worked for us and served this country. We want you to be proud of what you've done. We want you to continue to serve in government if that is your wish. Always give your best. Never get discouraged. Never be petty. Always remember, others may hate you. But those who hate you don't win unless you hate them, and then you destroy yourself.